Tariq Ramadan Arabic, Tariq Aramdan born the 26th of August 1962, is a Swiss Muslim academic, philosopher, and writer. He is professor of contemporary Islamic studies at Saint Anthony's College, Oxford, and the Faculty of Theology and Religion, University of Oxford. But as of 2018, is taking an agreed leave of absence. He is a visiting professor at the Faculty of Islamic Studies at Hamid bin Khalifa University in Qatar and the Université Mundiopolis in Morocco. He is also a senior research fellow at Tashisha University in Japan. He is the director of the Research Center of Islamic Legislation and Ethics CILE, based in Doha. He is a member of the UK Foreign Office Advisory Group on Freedom of Religion or Belief. He was elected by Time magazine in 2000 as one of the seven religious innovators of the 21st century and in 2004 as one of the 100 most influential people in the world and by foreign policy readers 2005, 2006, 2008 to 2010, 2012 to 2015 as one of the top 100 most influential thinkers in the world and global thinkers. Ramadan describes himself as a Salafi reformist. In November 2017, Tariq Ramadan took agreed leave of absence from Oxford University to contest allegations of rape and sexual misconduct. The university's statement noted that an agreed leave of absence implies no acceptance or presumption of guilt. In February 2018, he was formally charged with raping two women. He denies wrongdoing and is suing one of his accusers for slander. He is currently in jail awaiting trial. Topic life and career Tariq Ramadan was born in Geneva, Switzerland on 26 August 1962 to an Egyptian Muslim family. He is the son of Said Ramadan and Wafa al-Banna, who was the eldest daughter of Hassan al-Banna, who in 1928 founded the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Gamal al-Banna, the liberal Muslim reformer, was his great uncle. His father was a prominent figure in the Muslim Brotherhood and was exiled by Gamal Abdel Nasser from Egypt to Switzerland, where Ramadan was born. Tariq Ramadan holds an MA in French literature and a PhD in Arabic and Islamic studies at the University of Geneva. He also wrote a PhD dissertation on Friedrich Nietzsche, titled Nietzsche as a Historian of Philosophy. In 1994, he addressed a French speaking public audience, in Switzerland, with the help of Hassan Iquiasson and Malika Dif. He taught at the Collège de Saussure, a high school in Lancy, Switzerland, and claims to have held a lectureship in religion and philosophy at the University of Freiburg from 1996 to 2003, something the university publicly denied in 2018. He was appointed a professor at the University of Notre Dame in the United States in 2004 before his visa had been revoked by the Bush administration because of the Patriot Act. In October 2005 he began teaching at St. Anthony's College, Oxford on a visiting fellowship. In 2005 he was a senior research fellow at the Lokahi Foundation. In 2007 he successfully applied for the professorship in Islamic Studies at the University of Leiden. This led to severe criticism from both academics as well as politicians who deemed Ramadan a radical Islamist and a wolf in sheep's clothing. Ramadan later turned down the appointment, stating that the criticism on his appointment played no role in this decision. He was also a guest professor of identity and citizenship at Erasmus University Rotterdam, until August 2009 when both the city of Rotterdam and Erasmus University dismissed him from his positions as integration advisor and professor, stating that the program he hosted on Iran's press TV, Islam and Life, was irreconcilable with his duties in Rotterdam. Ramadan described this move as Islamophobic and politically charged. The Court of Rotterdam District ruled in 2012 in a civil law case that the Erasmus University acted careless by dismissing Ramadan on short notice. The dismissal by the municipality of Rotterdam, however, was not careless according to the court. Beginning September 2009, Ramadan was appointed to the chair in contemporary Islamic studies at Oxford University. Ramadan established the Movement des Musulmans Suisses, movement of Swiss Muslims, which engages in various interfaith seminars. He is an advisor to the EU on religious issues and was sought for advice by the EU on a commission on Islam and secularism. In September 2005 he was invited to join a task force by the government of the United Kingdom. He is also the founder and president of the European Muslim Network, a Brussels-based think tank that gathers European Muslim intellectuals and activists. As of 2009, Tariq Ramadan was persona non grata in Tunisia, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Libya, and Syria, which he has said is because of his criticism of their undemocratic regimes. 
He is also considered persona non grata in Israel. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Family life. Tariq Ramadan is married since 1986 and is the father of four children. His wife is born in Britannia, France. She converted from Catholicism to Islam and adopted the name Ayman. The couple lives separately. U.S. <laughs> <laughs> visa revocation and subsequent lifting In February 2004, Tariq Ramadan accepted the tenured position of Henry R. Luce Professor of Religion, Conflict and Peacebuilding at the Joan B. Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies, at the University of Notre Dame. He was granted a non-immigrant visa on 5 May, however, on 28 July, his H-1B visa was revoked by the State Department. In August 2004, spokesmen for U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement cited the ideological exclusion provision of the U.S. Patriot Act as the grounds for Ramadan's visa revocation. In October, the University of Notre Dame filed an H-1B petition on Ramadan's behalf. After hearing no response from the government by December, Ramadan resigned his position from the university. In September 2005, Ramadan filed an application for a B visa to allow him to participate at speaking arrangements with various organizations and universities. The government did not issue a decision on Ramadan's visa application, so the American Civil Liberties Union and the New York Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit on 25 January 2006 against the United States government on behalf of the American Academy of Religion, the American Association of University Professors and the Penn American Center, three groups who had planned on meeting with Ramadan in the U.S., for revoking Ramadan's visa under the ideological exclusion provision. The ACLU and NYCLU argued that the ideological exclusion provision was in violation of the First Amendment and Fifth Amendment rights of those three groups and that the government's actions violated the Administrative Procedures Act. After two months had passed without a decision being made, the plaintiffs filed a motion for a preliminary injunction. Pursuant to the injunction, the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York ordered the government on 23 June 2006 to issue its decision on Ramadan's pending B visa application within 90 days. On 19 September 2006, the government formally denied Ramadan's visa application. A State Department statement said, a U.S. consular officer has denied Dr. Tariq Ramadan's visa application. The consular officer concluded that Dr. Ramadan was inadmissible based solely on his actions, which constituted providing material support to a terrorist organization. Between December 1998 and July 2002, Ramadan had given donations totaling $940 to two charity organizations, the Committee for Charity and Support for the Palestinians CBSP, or Comité de Bienfaisance et de Secours aux Palestiniens and the Association de Secours Palestinien. The United States Treasury designated both the CBSP and ASP terrorist fundraising organizations for their alleged links to Hamas on the 22nd of August 2003. The U.S. Embassy told Ramadan that he reasonably should have known that the charities provided money to Hamas. In an article in the Washington Post, Ramadan asked, "How should I reasonably have known of their activities before the U.S. government itself knew?" On 2 February 2007, the ACLU and NYCLU amended their complaint, arguing that the government's explanation for denying Ramadan's visa application was not facially legitimate and bona fide, and that the ideological exclusion provision of the Patriot Act was in violation of the First and Fifth Amendments. They also argued that Ramadan's denial violated the First Amendment rights of those who wanted to hear him speak. In his decision on 20 December 2007, District Judge Paul A. Crotty ruled that the government's justification for denying Ramadan's visa was facially legitimate and bona fide, and noted that the court has no authority to override the government's consular decision. In January 2008, the ACLU appealed Crotty's ruling. Jamil Jaffer, director of the ACLU National Security Project and lead attorney in the case, stated, the government's shifting positions only underscore why meaningful judicial review, the kind of oversight that the district court failed to provide, is so important. 
In Professor Ramadan's case and many others, the government is using immigration laws to stigmatize and exclude its critics and to censor and control the ideas that Americans can hear. Censorship of this kind is completely inconsistent with the most basic principles of an open society." Ramadan himself remarked. The U.S. government's actions in my case seem, at least to me, to have been arbitrary and myopic. But I am encouraged by the unwavering support I have received from ordinary Americans, civic groups and particularly from scholars, academic organizations, and the ACLU. I am heartened by the emerging debate in the U.S. about what has been happening to our countries and ideals in the past six years and I am hopeful that eventually I will be allowed to enter the country so that I may contribute to the debate and be enriched by dialogue." On 17 July 2009, the U.S. Federal Appeals Court reversed the ruling of the lower district court. The three-judge panel on the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, composed of Judges John O. Newman, Wilfred Feinberg and Rena Raggi, ruled that the court had jurisdiction to consider the claim, despite the doctrine of consular nonreviewability." They stated that government was required by law to "...confront Ramadan with the allegation against him and afford him the subsequent opportunity to demonstrate by clear and convincing evidence that he did not know, and reasonably should not have known, that the recipient of his contributions was a terrorist organization." Under the limited review permitted by the 1972 Supreme Court ruling in Kleindienst v. Mandel, the panel concluded that the "...record does not establish that the consular officer who denied the visa confronted Ramadan with the allegation that he had knowingly rendered material support to a terrorist organization, thereby precluding an adequate opportunity for Ramadan to attempt to satisfy the provision that exempts a visa applicant from exclusion under the material support subsection if he can demonstrate by clear and convincing evidence that he did not know, and should not reasonably have known, that the organization was a terrorist organization organization." Additionally, the panel agreed with the plaintiff's contention that their First Amendment rights had been violated. The panel remanded the case to a lower court to determine if the consular officer had confronted Ramadan with the "...allegation that he knew that ASP provided funds to Hamas and then providing him with a reasonable opportunity to demonstrate, by clear and convincing evidence, that he did not know, and should not have reasonably known, of that fact." Following the ruling, Ramadan stated, "...I am very gratified with the court's decision. I am eager to engage once again with Americans in the kinds of face-to-face -face discussions that are central to academic exchange and crucial to bridging cultural divides." Melissa Goodman, staff attorney with the ACLU National Security Project, issued a statement saying, Given today's decision, we hope that the Obama administration will immediately end Professor Ramadan's exclusion. We also encourage the new administration to reconsider the exclusion of other foreign scholars, writers and artists who were barred from the country by the Bush administration on ideological grounds." On 8 April 2010, Ramadan spoke as part of a panel discussion at the Great Hall of Cooper Union in New York City, his first public appearance since the State Department lifted the ban. The group debated the lengths to which Western nations should go to accommodate their Muslim populations. Topic. Views Ramadan works primarily on Islamic theology and the position of Muslims in the West and within Muslim-majority countries. Generally speaking, he prioritizes Quranic interpretation over simply reading the text, in order to understand its meaning and to practice the tenets of Islamic philosophy. Referring to himself, Ramadan has at times used the construction, Salafi reformist. To illustrate his stance, he rejects a binary division of the world into Dar al-Islam the abode of Islam and Dar al-Harb the abode of war, on the grounds that such a division is not mentioned in the Quran. He has been also known to cite favorably the Dar al-Dawah abode of preaching, for him the Islamic message 
to which Muslims are expected to bear witness is not primarily the particularist, socially conservative code of traditionalist jurists, but a commitment to universalism and the welfare of non-Muslims. It is also an injunction not merely to make demands on un-Islamic societies but to express solidarity with them. Ramadan has voiced his opposition to all forms of capital punishment but believes the Muslim world should remove such laws from within, without any Western pressure, as such would only further alienate Muslims, and instead bolster the position of those who support Hudud punishments. Muslim populations are convincing themselves of the Islamic character of these practices through a rejection of the West, on the basis of a simplistic reasoning that stipulates that the less Western, the more Islamic. He has condemned suicide bombing and violence as a tactic. Additionally, he contends that terrorism is never justifiable, even though it can be understandable in the sense of having a legitimate cause of resistance behind it. Ramadan wrote that the Muslim response to Pope Benedict XVI's speech on Islam was disproportionate, and was encouraged by reactionary Islamic regimes in order to distract their populations, and that it did not improve the position of Islam in the world. Ramadan wrote an article, Critique des Nouveaux Intellectuals Communautaires which French newspapers Le Monde and Le Figaro refused to publish. Uma.com did eventually publish it. In the article he criticizes a number of French intellectuals and figures such as Alexander Adler, Alain Finkielkraut, Bernard-Henri Lévy, André Glucksmann and Bernard Kouchner, for allegedly abandoning universal human rights, and giving special status to the defense of Israel. Ramadan was accused, in return, of having used inflammatory language. The underlying content of the essay was sharply criticized as well. Topic. Debate In a French television debate in 2003 with Nicolas Sarkozy, Sarkozy accused Ramadan of defending the stoning of adulterers, a punishment supposedly warranted by a section of the Islamic penal code known as Hudud. Ramadan replied that Sarkozy was wrong. He said that he opposed corporal punishments, stoning and the death penalty and that he is in favor of a moratorium on these practices to open the debate among Islamic scholars in Muslim-majority countries that enforce them. Many people, including Sarkozy, were outraged. Ramadan later defended his position arguing that, because it involved religious texts that Muslims take seriously, the law would have to be properly understood and contextualized. Ramadan argued that in Muslim countries, the simple act to condemn won't change anything, but with a moratorium, it could open the way for further debate. He thinks that such a debate can only lead to an abolition of these rules. Topic. Mauritania ban On 16 July 2016, Ramadan was denied entry to Mauritania at Nouakchott International Airport. He had been invited to give lectures in the country. He claimed the decision came directly from the presidency. Local police confirmed he was expelled. This is the eighth time a Muslim country has denied him entry. Critical reception Some academics have greeted his works with enthusiasm, detecting liberalizing and rationalizing tendencies. Praise Paul Donnelly at the liberal online magazine Salon. Com asked rhetorically, Tariq Ramadan, the Muslim Martin Luther? Similarly, an article at the Self described liberal The American Prospect praised Ramadan and his work in particular as an entire corpus consists of a steady and unyielding assault on Muslim insularity, self-righteousness, and self-pity. Criticism <inaudible> 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 In a book published by Encounter Books, Caroline Forrest claimed to have analyzed Tariq Ramadan's 15 books, 1,500 pages of interviews, and approximately 100 recordings, and concludes, Ramadan is a war leader, an Islamist, and the political heir of his grandfather, Hassan al Banna, stating that his discourse is often just a repetition of the discourse that Banna had at the beginning of the 20th century in Egypt and that he presents al banna as a model to be followed she argues that tariq ramadan is slippery he says one thing to his faithful muslim followers and something else entirely to his western audience 
His choice of words, the formulations he uses, even his tone of voice, vary, chameleon-like, according to his audience." Ramadan claims that Forrest's book contains 200 errors, only three of which she has confirmed, the former head of the French anti-racism organization SOS Racism, Malek Bouti, has been quoted as saying to Ramadan, after talking with him at length, "'Mr. Ramadan, you are a fascist.'" In an interview with Europe One, Malek Bouti also likened Ramadan to a small Le Pen. In another interview he accused him of having crossed the line of racism and antisemitism, thus not genuinely belonging to the alter-globalization movement. Bertrand Delanoy, mayor of Paris, declared Ramadan unfit to participate at the European Social Forum, as not even a slight suspicion of antisemitism would be tolerable. Talking to the Paris Weekly Marianne, Fadla Amara, president of Ni Poutes Ni Somises neither whores nor submissive, a French feminist movement, Aurelia Filippetti, municipal councillor for the Greens in Paris, Patrick Klugman, leading member of the Conseil Représentatif des Institutions Juives de France, and Dominique Sopo, head of SOS Racism, accuse Ramadan of having misused the alter-globalization movement's ingenuousness to advance his radicalism and antisemitism. Egyptian intellectual Tariq Hegi has also charged Ramadan with saying different things to different audiences. Other criticisms have included claims that an essay attacking French intellectuals was anti-Semitic and that Ramadan has shown excessive generosity in his rationalization of the motives behind acts of terrorism, such as in the case of Mohamed Mera, Olivier Gita, writing in the Weekly Standard, welcomed the U.S. decision to refuse Ramadan a visa, based on Ramadan's supposed links to terrorist organizations, and claiming that his father was the likely author of the project. A roadmap for installing Islamic regimes in the West by propaganda, preaching, and if necessary war." Gita also criticized Ramadan for his campaign against the performance of Voltaire's play Muhammad in Geneva. Similarly, self-described conservative Daniel Pipes concurred with the revocation of Ramadan's visa on grounds of Ramadan's alleged ties with Islamic extremism. After the lifting of the visa revocation, an article in the National Review criticized the double standard of lifting the visa restriction on Ramadan, but not for Assam Abu Isa who was banned by the Bush administration for being a whistleblower against the Palestinian Authority's corruption. Topic. Response to some of the criticism Ramadan denies contacts with terrorists or other Islamic fundamentalists and the charges of antisemitism and double talk, attributing the charges to misinterpretation and an unfamiliarity with his writings. He stated, I have often been accused of this double discourse, and to those who say it, I say, bring the evidence. I am quite clear in what I say. The problem is that many people don't want to hear it, particularly in the media. Most of the stories about me are completely untrue. Journalists simply repeat black propaganda from the Internet without any corroboration, and it just confirms what they want to believe. Words are used out of context. There is double talk, yes, but there is also double hearing. That is what I want to challenge. In answer to criticism of his response to the 11th of September, Ramadan replied that two days after the attacks he had published an open letter, exhorting Muslims to condemn the attacks and the attackers, and not to hide behind conspiracy theories, and that less than two weeks after the attacks he had stated that the probability of bin Laden's guilt is large, but some questions remain unanswered. But whoever they are, bin Laden or others, it is necessary to find them and that they be judged." And that the interview had been conducted before any evidence was publicly available. Topic. Public reception In a free internet poll by Foreign Policy magazine, Ramadan was listed as one of the 100 top global thinkers in 2008, 2009, 2010 and 2012. Topic. Allegations of rape and sexual violation In October 2017, secular activist Henda Ayari filed a complaint with the prosecutor's office of Rouen, stating that Ramadan had sexually assaulted her in a Paris hotel. Ayari had previously described the alleged incident in her 2016 book J'ai choisi d'être libre in English I chose to be free, but had not revealed the real name of her attacker. On 20 October 2017, she announced on her Facebook account, 
C'est une décision très difficile, mais j'ai décidé moi aussi qu'il est temps de dénoncer mon agresseur, c'est Tariq Ramadan. This is a very difficult decision, but I also have decided it is time to name my aggressor, it is Tariq Ramadan." Ramadan's lawyer, Yassine Bouzrou, has said he would file a counter-suit for defamation. Bouzrou told the French paper Le Parisien that he denied the allegations and would file a complaint for defamation to Rouen prosecutors. A few days after Ayari, a second woman filed a complaint stating that Ramadan raped her. The disabled 45 year old French convert to Islam, known in media reports as Christelle, says Ramadan in 2009 lured her into his hotel room where he assaulted and raped her. A third woman claimed Ramadan had sent her pornographic messages and later tried to blackmail and manipulate her. Four other Swiss women subsequently came forth in early November 2017 with allegations that Ramadan molested them when they were teenagers. The claimants include one woman who says that Ramadan made advances when she was 14 years old, and another who claims she had sexual relations with Ramadan when she was 15. Ramadan has denied the accusations. On the 4th of November 2017, the satirical French newspaper Charlie Hebdo published a cover story on the Ramadan affair. On the 7th of November 2017, the University of Oxford announced that, by mutual agreement and with immediate effect, Ramadan has taken a leave of absence." The statement noted that an agreed leave of absence implies no acceptance or presumption of guilt. On 9 November 2017, the French weekly news magazine Lobs published a cover story covering the allegations. In January 2018, Ramadan was denied entry to Qatar as a consequence of the scandal. On the 31st of January 2018, Ramadan was taken into custody by French police. After two days of questioning, he was formally charged with two counts of rape and ordered to remain in custody. He is being held in the Fleury Marogis prison, Essun. In March 2018, a third woman came forward alleging that she was raped by Ramadan on multiple occasions in France, Brussels, and London between 2013 and 2014. Shortly thereafter, a fourth woman filed a police complaint alleging she had been raped by Ramadan. An American now living in Kuwait, she alleged that Ramadan had assaulted her in Washington, D.C. in August 2013. No formal charges have yet emerged from this complaint. In April 2018, the Belgian judiciary reported that Ramadan had paid €27,000 three years earlier to a Belgian Moroccan woman in exchange for the deletion of online posts revealing their affair. In the posts, she had detailed Ramadan's psychological grip on her. On 13 April 2018, the Swiss newspaper La Tribune de Geneve reported that a woman had come forward to the authorities in Geneva and accused Ramadan of a sexual assault involving aggravating cruelty in September 2008. The National reported that he allegedly raped her and held her against her will for several hours in a Geneva hotel room. Later in April 2018, Ramadan admitted that he had been in a sexual relationship with the third rape complainant, who has presented to investigators a dress reportedly stained with his semen, but he insisted that it was always consensual. In May 2018, Ayari modified aspects of her account, according to her based on her diary records, saying that the encounter took place in March 2012 at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Paris's Place de la République. In a newspaper blog, British journalist Peter Oberne criticized what he saw as failings in the French justice system and hypocrisy of prominent French public figures such as Manuel Valls pointing out that others accused of rape in France await their fate in freedom. Regarding such sympathy for Ramadan over his detention, Henda Ayari, the first of his accusers, said that he is undeserving of sympathy. It is for the courts to decide, she said. Eventually, if French justice says he is guilty, those people may regret their support. In June, Ramadan admitted to having five extramarital affairs, saying that he sometimes acted in ways that were inconsistent with his principles. In that same month, the presiding judges also cleared him of the third accusation, because it had been a consensual extramarital affair, and he remains imprisoned for the first two. In July, it was revealed that the first accuser, Henda Ayari, was at her younger brother's wedding on the date when she was allegedly raped. In October, Ramadan admitted that he had consensual sex with Ayari and Christelle. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Declining health. Since his initial detention, Ramadan has been hospitalized several times for reported multiple sclerosis. His attorney reported that several doctors have said his condition is 
incompatible with detention. However, the court insisted on maintaining his detention after one of their physicians stated that his condition was compatible with detention. Topic: <laughs> Awards and nominations. In January 2014, Ramadan was nominated for the title of Religious Advocate of the Year at the British Muslim Awards. Bibliography Ramadan has authored books in French and English, some of which have been translated into other languages. Books published in French 1994, augmented in 1998 Les Musulmans dans la laicité, responsabilités et droits des musulmans dans les sociétés occidentales. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-90-908737-5 Islam, la face à face des civilisations, quel projet pour quelle modernité? Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-90-908731-3 1998 Ox Sources du Renouveau Musulmans, dal Afghania Hassan al-Banna un siècle de réformisme islamique. Paris, Bayard Editions, Centurion. ISBN 978-2-22-736314-4 Pay it on vivre avec l'Elam with Jacques Nerinck. Lausanne, Favre. ISBN 978-2-82-890626-9 Etre musulman Europon, Etude des sources islamiques à la lumière du contexte Europon with Claude Dabak. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-90-908743-6 2000 Lilam et les musulmans, grandeur et décadence, dans le quotidien de nos vies. Beirut, Editions al Borak. ISBN 978 2 2000 Lilam N. Questions with Alain Gresh. Paris, Sinbad, Act Sud. ISBN 978 2 74 272916 6. 2001 Entre l'homme et son cœur. Lyon, Tahid, 978 2 90 908767 2. 2001 La face à face des civilisations, quel projet pour quelle modernité. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978 2 90 908758 0. 2002 De Lilam. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978 2 90 908780 1. 2002 Jihad, Violence, Guerre et Paix en Islam. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-90-908784-9 2002 Dar ash-Shahada, L'Occident, Espace du Temwanage. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-90-908783-2 2002 Musulmans d'Occident, Construire et Contribuer. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-90-908781-8 2002 La Foy, La Voy et la Résistance. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-90-908782-5 2003 Le saint Coran, Chapitre Ama, avec la traduction en langue française du sens de ses versets. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-84-862003-9 2003 Arabes et musulmans face à la mondialisation, le défi du pluralisme. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-84-862017-6 2003 Les musulmans d'Occident et l'avenir de l'Ilam, Paris, Sinbad, Act Sud. ISBN 978-2-74-274005-5 2005 Fo il faire ter Tariq Ramadan, suivi d'une intrition avec Tariq Ramadan, Wyh Aziz Zamouri, Paris, L'Archipel. ISBN 978 2 84 187647 1. 2006 Mohamed Vi du Prophète, Les enseignements spirituels et contemporains. Paris, Presses du Chatelet. 
ISBN 978-2-84-592201-3 2008 Un Un Vision, Etre les sujets de notre histoire. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-84-862149-4 Face a nos pures, le choix de la confiance. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-84-862148-7 Quelque lettre du cœur. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-84-862147-0 Faux il avoir pure des religions, with Elie Barnavi and Jean-Michel de Falco Leandri, Paris, Editions Morticus. ISBN 978-2-75-570403-7 Islam, la réforme radical, ethique et libération. Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592266-2 Mon in time conviction. Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592290-7 2009 L'autre en nous, pour une philosophie du pluralisme, essay. Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592282-2 Lilam et le réveil arabe. Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592329-4 2014 Au peril des idées, les grandes questions de notre temps with Edgar Morin, Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592551-9 De l'Ilam et des Musulmans, Réflexion sur l'homme, la réforme, la guerre et l'Occident, Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592417-8 2015 Introduction à l'éthique islamique, les sources juridiques, philosophiques, mystiques et les questions contemporaines. Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592607-3 Le génie de l'Ilam. Paris, Presses du Châtelet. ISBN 978-2-84-592-6318 Topic. Books published in English 1999 To be a European Muslim, a study of Islamic sources in the European context. Leicester, UK, Islamic Foundation. ISBN 978-0-86-037300-1 1999 Muslims in France, The Way Towards Coexistence. Markfield, Leicester, UK, Islamic Foundation. ISBN 978-0-86-037299-8 Islam, The West and the Challenges of Modernity with Said Amgar. Leicester, UK, Islamic Foundation. ISBN 978-0-86-037311-7 Globalization, Muslim Resistances Multilingual, N. F. R. De. It. S. P. Lyon, Tahid. ISBN 978-2-84-862016-9 Western Muslims and the Future of Islam. Oxford, New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-803820-7 In the Footsteps of the Prophet, Lessons from the Life of Muhammad. New York, New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-530880-8 The Messenger, The Meanings of the Life of Muhammad. London, Alan Lane. ISBN 978-0-71-399960-0 ISBN 978-1-84-614025-9 Radical Reform, Islamic Ethics and Liberation. Oxford, New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-533171-4 What I Believe. New York, Oxford University Press.
ISBN 978-0-19-538785-8 The Quest for Meaning – Developing a Philosophy of Pluralism. London, Alan Lane. ISBN 978-1-84-614152-2 ISBN 978-1-84-614151-5 2011 on super diversity multilingual n n l r rotterdam wit de with publishers berlin sternberg press isbn 9781934105771 2012 islam and the arab awakening oxford new york oxford university press isbn 9780199933730 2012 The Arab Awakening, Islam and the New Middle East. London, Alan Lane. ISBN 978-1-84-614650-3 Islam, The Essentials. London, Pelican. ISBN 978-0141980508 Introduction to Islam. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0190467487 Topic References Topic External Links Media related to Tariq Ramadan at Wikimedia Commons Publications by and about Tariq Ramadan in the catalog Helvetica of the Swiss National Library Appearances on C-SPAN